Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is Sunday, April 1st, 2012. And this is the Kane and Kale Show. I am your host, Keenan Lafferty. Today we are going to be doing a tutorial on drawing expressions. Expressions. Yes, but before we get into that, I want to talk about something very important. If you'll notice, on... The YouTube page, what? It's over 2,000! Yeah! <laughs> so, thank you guys so much for finally getting us past the 2K mark. And yes, we are at the year 2021. And it is amazing. So thank you guys so much for telling your friends about it, subscribing to the videos, and be willing to watch me make a fool out of myself every week here on YouTube. Moving on to the Facebook. I unfortunately came on here today to notice that they now made timeline mandatory or something. Like I, I like how it makes the pictures bigger, but I don't know, like there's something about the old format that I liked more. And I think it actually took out some of the pictures that got put up here, and that is kind of bothering me. So um, if anybody knows how to fix that or whatever, just leave me a comment or something. Because <laughs> uh, I don't really like this for the can kill daily thing. Twitter! Yes, for those of you who are not following me, please do follow so I can bother you and let you know when I am not only recording, but when I upload new videos to YouTube. Now, with all that out of the way, we will move on to our tutorial for drawing things. Regarding expressions. So for those of you who tuned in yesterday to see the update, I want to let you know that the aquarium was an amazing time. I had such a great time. Although, there were no cuttlefish. Cuttlefish are my favorite deep sea creatures. And to my dismay, there was a lack of them at the, at the aquarium. But there were plenty of sea otters sea lions, and sea horses. And I was not disappointed in that. So, all right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the ranges, the, the first three ranges of happy, sad, and angry, kind of the, your basic expressions. Now we'll kind of uh, look at what kind of goes into making each of those faces. 228, we will conclude approximately at 258, or around three. We'll call it. Three is a good number. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna draw out our face. And no laggy, no lag for you. All right, so let's draw out three faces. There we go. And then what I'm gonna do here is hold Alt and grab it, move it, and that will just automatically duplicate it. Bam! Three faces. Merge it down. Good to go. Good to go. All right, so let's first start with our happy face. Let's start. Oh, and while we're here, I want to also, if you recall in the last tutorial where I was talking about creating expressions on the faces and having the ellipses of the face, wherever it's turned, complementing it. Whereas, like, for example, if you are happy to turn your face up, it makes you look happier. If you're angry, you turn your face down. I'll show you kind of how that works. So we'll kind of take the midpoint and kind of curve it up. So our ellipses of the face are going upward like this. And when you do that, it actually brings your chin up a tiny bit, too. So we'll simulate that. Why not? Why not? All right, midpoint there. All right, and without going into too much crazy detail with the nose, because the nose is really hard to render from this angle, basically I'll just do this. Roll down. <laughs> like that. All right, that's that's good enough. All right, so and the shading will be oh, oops, the shading will just be like that. Very good, very good. 
So, um, the first thing you're going to want to do, obviously, when you're drawing a happy face is simply um, you're going to have the lines curving up. Imagine that. And a good way to think about where those lines should stop is I like to think of it as, um, as a good balance between kind of hitting the, the pupil of your eye when you smile. Uh, especially when you're doing kind of like a comic book anime. Sometimes you can push it a little bit further. And also, another thing is you can choose whether or not to render these, these dimples at the edge here. In fact, let me zoom in a little bit. So you'll do the line, right? And then the dimples are always going to be... I usually always render them very, very uh, softly. Very, very... Um, uh, what's the word? Suggestive. Suggestive dimples. Why not? And then, remember, as we learned in our other tutorial about how the lips work, when your face is tilted up, this bottom pigment will be small, and the top pigment will be larger. And depending on... Let's actually draw guys this time, because we're always drawing girls. For guys, I usually just uh, suggest the bottom pigment, and then the top one I kind of leave out. So we are drawing men today. We'll draw a happy man and an angry woman. We'll do that. How about, how about that? Okay, so, step one, you make the curvatures of the smile, obviously. Everybody knows how to do that. Second off, you're going to start drawing in the eyes. So remember, this kind of lines up with your pupil, right? And, okay, so here is where the second part comes in. When you're smiling, you push your eyelids up. So always keep that in mind. You're, you're going to be pushing the eyelids up. And because also the face is being turned up, the ellipses, we're also going to show a little bit of that eyelid being kicked up like that. And then always remember, a big part of expression, and I'm still learning this, is I'd say probably about like 80% of the expression that's being shown is in the eyes. So like if you have the eyes open, it means it means you're attentive. You're looking at something. You're interested. You're you're happy with something. If you have your eyes closed, you're not attentive. Or if if they're being covered, you're usually trying to I don't know. It just it, it reads as a more distant distant expression, less emotion, or less happy emotion. Oh, whoops! Why am I putting eyelashes? This is a guy. This is a guy, not a woman. So yeah. It's actually turning out to be kind of an androgynous looking male, but we'll see what we can do about that. Same thing, kind of follow that line up for a general idea of where your people should go. And again, if you always need to measure it, I always just kind of take an eyeball. And kind of just the general idea is that there's a there's an eyeball between, you know, spacing between the two there. And again, we're sculpting the lines, sculpting. We are sculptors, so be sure to sculpt those lines. So another way to make a guy's face look more like a guy, and because you can see here, this could actually go either way. <clears throat> One thing I like to do to make guys' faces look more guy-ish is I'll start adding more angles to things, <clears throat> like uh, remember when I talked about this shape that happens here, how it goes out and then back in, and then the eyebrow shape goes out like that. <clears throat> By the way, sorry, I'm still recovering slightly from the, the, I think I just had a bad cold for these last couple weeks. Kind of this line that, that connects here and goes into our brow. So always be thinking about angles. Let's give them some big, fat, Manly, manly eyebrows. <clears throat> there we go. Give them, and again, I usually the way I create my eyes is I actually draw in just a circle, and then I'll erase the iris. It's another cool way to work. Again, the sculptor's method. Sculptor's method. I I like that. I think I'm gonna start calling my the way I do my line art the sculptor's method. Sounds good to me. And then also the cheekbone. The cheekbone, um, when you're talking about the planes of the face, you can even look at it on my face. You notice the cheekbones right here. They come down and then they 
connect to my chin. Always be aware of that. You can draw it up like that. And then usually, I kind of just have an indicator line. The more you indicate this line here, is going to age your character. It's going to make them look older and more mature. Harsh lines. Whoa, oh, dang. He has a like, massive chin. Good for another manly man. See, the chin should be more like that. Drop it down. Have go. See? He's looking very happy, and his eyes are open, indicating he's interested in what he's looking at. He is happy. He's content. And that makes us all happy. Yes. Yes. Give him a good forehead. Oh, yeah, yeah. Also, remember, the cheek comes in here. And usually I draw, like, these little anime kind of shady lines. Just, it also, it, it makes your characters look kind of, uh, makes them look more endearing, but it also serves as just a, a shading point to show that the plane is changing there. And then you draw kind of up here. Like, the brow is changing like this, but you don't want the shape of your head to look like that, right? Like, there is a plane that's happening there, but it also, you still see, like, the back of the head happening here. So you, you can indicate this line, but don't make it, like, the shape of the head. Like that. It's like the skull shape, I think. That's, that's what's happening. The skull underneath. And what's cool is you can also... Once you create, this is another reason why I like drawing my faces like this in this sort of simplified state, is because you can take the lasso tool, you can lasso this, and just changing the position of the smile can affect the character. Like if you move it up a little bit more, or, yeah, let's just do this. You can just grab the uh, position tool. What I did was I copied, all right, let me do that again. I selected it, I hit control C to copy it, delete it, then control V, which is paste. And then it pastes it on, on a new layer. And then you can grab this layer and move it around wherever you want. So you move it up, it kind of becomes more of a dirt face. You make his mouth huge. It becomes kind of scary looking. <laughs> or you can move it lower. And see how each of these, placing it in different uh, places on the face, it can affect the character and kind of what you're going for. I think right around there is good. I mean, remember, when in doubt, always think about that teardrop shape that's happening, and that should connect to the top pigment of the lips. So, yes, when in doubt. When in doubt. Man, drawing a nose from this angle is so annoying. I have to do a tutorial on that just for myself again. Because when I did the redeemed ribbon one, I was working with a, a reference of somebody with their face turned up. I think I took a picture of myself and, and did a for my reference. All right, and you can kind of just shade it in. So there is our happy man. He's very happy, as you can see. Throw a little bit of shading underneath there. Bam! Happy man out of the way. And let's give him some hair. Let's give him some hair. Not emo hair. We all know that emos are not happy. Like me. I'm emo. And I'm not happy. Ears. Oh, yeah. Ears. Remember, follow that eyebrow line. Bam. That's the top of the ear. The nose line. Remember the ellipse. Go down. Bottom of the ear. Bottom of the ear. Top of the ear. I'm drawing the hair around it. There we go. That is the basics of our happy man. Remember, what you want to take away from this is when you're drawing the eyes of your character, remember that 80% of the expression, in my humble opinion, is in the eyes. Moving on, we're going to be drawing a sad, let's do a sad girl, because a lot of those anime pictures, the girls are always just sad looking. And I think it'll lend well to this. So sad, we can do face off. Let's do face on sadness. 
And there's so many different like types of sad. There's like scared sad, there's like like crying sad. <laughs> but I'll just kind of stick with like the usual kind of blank kind of stare thing that a lot of these anime girls have going on. So the first thing we're gonna do is okay, so we got the eye line, right? Let's draw on these girls' eyes. And again, remember, one of the biggest things we want to accomplish here is because she's sad, we want a little bit more of a reserved or like emotionless eyes. So her eyelids are gonna be dropped a little bit, right? And I usually like to have a little bit more of like the bottom lid showing as well. And see how I'm just kind of creating this shape. Remember, I talk about kind of creating your own shapes for your eyes. Don't be afraid to just try new stuff. But one thing that I always like to do is when I'm doing the eyelashes, uh, I'll kind of do these little lashes that fly away there, and then I'll just like put like one or two like little ones on the bottom here. I just I like doing that for some reason. It's kind of like a little can kale flare, the can kale lash effect. And then you do this, right? So right now, I mean, you just look at those eyes, and they kind of look look kind of sultry, kind of seductive, sexy even. But watch as we put in the rest of the eyes. Like, the eyes entails the eyebrows, the eyelids, everything around it. And that is where a lot of the expression comes in. In fact, let's just start with just the eyes, and we'll see how that, that affects the rest of the face. Okay. So, you got these eyes looking at you. The pupil is partially covered. So you've got a little less emotion. And notice how, we're talking about sculpting, you can actually just continue to add lines down. And the more you push them down, see? Look at how much that changed just the expression in the eyes. I don't want them that low, but that's another thing that I like to do. It's the smallest little bit of just extra eyelash covering the eyelid, or the eyeball, will change the expression of the character. So now what we're going to do is throw in the next part, and that is going to be our eyebrows. So if we're going to be sad, they're going to be pushing up like this. They're going to be going up this way. There we go, like that. And here's the other thing, too, that I like to do. Sometimes when I just make both the eyes, or the eyebrows, kind of similar, it tends to make them look, I don't know, just like regular sad. To add more character to it, what I like to do is I like to kick one, one of the eyebrows up. It's kind of like a little bit, like I'm sad or I'm shocked, but I'm also like in a little bit of disbelief. So I'm just like, like this, right? This adds a little bit of like uncertainty. Like this is more of like a scared face or a scared sad face. So we're throwing in the nose now. Let's say we want the mouth to go like around here. Think of the chin, how it comes up. This is the best way for me to place a mouth. Um, I always think of how far the chin comes up and that little divot that happens like right here, the shadow. So this would be the divot and the shadow, and then the actual lip would be there, right? Or what I like to do, I mean that's just one thing, that's kind of for measuring, but uh, another thing I like to do is I just kind of like throw in, just kind of throw in where I think the mouth would look good, right? I'll just do that, the shape, remember the M shape. Remember the M shape. So I'll throw that in, like that, and then the bottom pigment there. There we go. Throw a little shine on there. Like that. And the nose above. The nose above. The simple actually it's funny. Look at look at that nose shape. The nose shape is almost like a repeating M as well. Yeah, it's like up, down, up, down. And then it has that cast shadow beneath it. And then I erase a little bit on the underside to kind of simulate the, the reflected light that's coming out toward it. Yes, I like it. I like that. Yeah. 
So you can see kind of what's happening now. And we have our scared, kind of sad look, looking face. And um, another thing that took me a little while to figure out was where I like this curve to start happening, the cheek or this uh, jawline. And I guess the easiest way for me to remember it is I just kind of go straight out, like a straight line out. And for girls, I think I like to have it like start to curve, like either right at this line or just a little above it. it tends to make their faces look a little bit more kind of like petite, kind of delicate. Delicate and dainty. And again, remember how I throw in these lines here? I'll do that here too, as well. I'll throw in those little anime cheek blush lines. Put it up like that. And remember, this line is happening where it goes in and then out. But you can still see the head behind it. And this line is happening as well. The eyebrow comes down like that. This line connects to this line, right? Like that. Then the nose goes up like that. And you kind of shave that in. Shave that in. I think that's about how I do it. That is about right. Yes. And just sculpt away. Sculpt away! Sounds like a product on late night television. Sculpt away! All my problems were fixed once I bought Sculpt Away. Thank you, Sculpt Away. Thank you so much. Alrighty then. Moving on. Some more sculpting happening. More sculpting. Um, chin. Just kind of clean that up. I'm liking that. Man, it is windy here. I can literally feel the... Or hear the wind pushing on the the door outside. It's crazy! When are we going to start getting more sun? That's what I want. All right. Oh, and always uh, be sure to flip the canvas, too. You can kind of see little things, little little uh, fresh eyes. Fresh eyes on the, on the face. That's always good. Eyebrow, bottom of the nose. Bam, there's your ear. Bottom of the nose, up to the eyebrow. Bam, there's your ear. Bam, there's your ear. Throw in these little lines there. Suggest suggestion. Suggestion of hair. And this girl is sad, so we will give her emo hair. She's very sad. Emo hair. Emo hair on our sad anime faced girl. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Throw that in. Real quick. Neck. There we go. Suggestion of hair. That is really sloppy hair, but you get the idea. <laughs> there we go. Man. She's very sad. Very emo. All right, phase two complete. We have happy man, sad woman, and now we will have angry woman. Looks like we've got about 10 minutes left. So we'll finish this baby up. Now, once again, we will be kicking the ellipses downward this time because they are going to complement our angry face. Going up like that. You want to think about You'll notice that the center point of this ellipse is lower than half of the face, but the starting point here is at half of the face. That's always something you want to remember. That'll help give your face's depth, and it, it changes the, the proportions of where the lines meet in the center, but they all start at the same point, if that makes sense. So first thing I like to do when I'm rendering an angry face is we're going to be thinking about the lines. Actually, this is another thing I should talk about. Let me go back and show you exactly what's happening with each of these faces. New layer. So with a happy face, 
you have a lot of lines. Like the general idea is your lines are going up. You notice this line goes up, this line goes up. You know, um, these lines, like things are being pushed up. The eyelids are being pushed up. This eyelid is being pushed up. You know, the eyebrows, everything is being uplifted. It is all, it's like body language, right? When you're sad, things are, lines are going in like this. Things are going up and in, right? You can even make her extra sad, right? <laughs> like that. There's like conflict happening. There's a conflict of interest. Sadness is happening. And so, um, yeah, and things are being cut off. You know, like the eyelids are being pushed down. Again, remember in the eyes, you cut off, you know, how much of the pupil is showing. It shows disinterest. It shows disconnection, less emotion. So, um, yeah, I'll leave that. <laughs> and finally, with an angry face, all of our lines are going to be pushing inward, like those represent eyebrows, right? Everything that you can do to push lines like this, there's, it's like an explosion point. A nuclear explosion is happening here. And that creates anger and conflict again, but it's a different kind of conflict. So let me demonstrate. So like I said, a lot of the emotion is going to be in the eyes. So remember, we're creating these downward angles. Everything is going to meet in the center. Oh, meet in the center. So let's create these eyes. Remember, kind of an eyeball space between. Bam, there's the other eye, right? And having the eyes like being covered by the brow and the eyelid when they're looking down like this really, really punches that, that angry look. And uh, I always always look for opportunities to do this when I'm rendering a character with this expression. is Because um, also when you're like this, this, this brow line is actually going to come all the way down and it can begin to cover like this. So you notice when I do this, my eyebrows can actually cover my eyes quite a bit. Oh man, it kind of, oh, kind of hurt. <laughs> Don't do that for too long and it'll get stuck like that. So you can also not be afraid to do that. Oh yeah, we're drawing an angry girl. I forgot. Yeah, I'll show you how to make an angry looking girl because it's easy to do like the, the whole Dragon Ball Z angry face, you know, but how do you make a girl look angry? Hmm, these are the things you like to think about. So, uh, always keep, uh, for girls I like to think of dainty eyebrows, right? So thinner, obviously. And um, like these big like wrinkles and stuff and all that stuff that's happening in there, I usually try to mix that when I'm drawing a because it just appears too cluttered and girls faces tend to look more attractive when there's less lines happening on them you know in comics obviously so okay so we've got these lines going down right we've got this happening now next um, you can actually almost use this line that we drew in earlier and kind of push it up like this right and add those eyelashes on the end. This is going to start to add your, your feminine your feminine look to them. The eyelashes on the edge. And again, usually when you're angry, you're kind of you're doing this. And again, you're engaging this these muscles, which is also going to push your eyelids up. So drawing that eyelid happening there. And you can already see, look at how much emotion is being communicated just in the eyes alone. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the magic <laughs> that you should use. Now remember also, we're pushing these planes down, so the nose is going to come down like this. And again, very simple lines, right? Very, very simple lines. We're not going to see the nostrils at this angle because um, the nose is kicked down. So it's going to kind of create, like, simplified is just going to be kind of like a little um, point like that, right? Also, another thing that happens when you're grimacing or just making an angry face is these lines start to form. 
Like these these are actually like wrinkles. These are wrinkles that are happening. I don't know if this shows it, but yeah, like your your nose will wrinkle, and uh, the skin folds kind of get pushed down like this. So if I were to draw a line following this nose, it would go like this, and then up, and out like that. It's kind of doing that kind of thing. So always keep that in mind. But again, since we are drawing a lovely lady, we don't want to indicate that super crazily. In fact, let's give her some blush lines so she looks cute. And then finally, this is one of the most important things when you're drawing an angry mouth at this angle where it's looking down. Normally, we would do this thing, right? We'd do this like that. All right. Oh. kind of like that, right? But because we are working with the ellipses at this angle, what we need to do is draw in your M shape, but make sure that the shapes and the lines that you draw are helping to reinforce this curve that's happening, which is interesting because that line drawn on the face will, could indicate a smile, right? But because if you help to reinforce that the face is pointing down, it will still read as an angry face. So, watch, I will demonstrate. Think of the teeth as well. Like the teeth follow this. They follow that line, right? And a good way to draw teeth for me is I, I always always like do it like like it's just a straight box in their mouth. And then I'll just like put a hint of the the opening at the edge. Like, here, I'll show you. This remember, draw in that line. See, look, that line exactly drawn over here. You do that, and then you put eyes there. Of course, it's a happy face, but because you're drawing it here, the ellipses are reinforcing that the face is pushed down, so you can get away with it. Like that, like that. No, actually, even push this out even more. <laughs> I was just looking really vicious. Really vicious. Really, really PO'd right now. Really, really PO'd. Okay, so when I'm doing the teeth, I'll usually just leave it white like that, and then I'll draw in kind of a hint of the edge right there to kind of indicate the teeth. And then I'll like shade the edges a little bit too to kind of help reinforce the cylindrical shape the teeth make inside of the mouth. Like that. And then at the edges, you notice how I kind of curl them down a little bit. I'll actually give her a little bit more chin. She's going down like this. The chin will probably be a little bit more down here. And because the face is being pushed up, or I mean the, uh, the face is tilted down, the cheek, or sorry, the jawbone is going to appear a little bit higher. And everything is going to be up here a little bit higher. Much like, remember when we were doing the last week's episode, or uh, two weeks ago episode, remember how I talked about when things get pushed towards you, uh, the perspective kind of changes, right? It's kind of the same thing with the what we were doing with the Disguise Warrior Girl's chest and hips. Remember how I grabbed her, her legs and then moved them up to simulate a little bit more of that dynamic perspective happening. Same thing is happening here. We're basically grabbing the forehead and now this is like coming toward us like this, right? And the perspective is happening here, right? So always keep that in mind. Okay, so this chick is angry. And uh, yeah, we'll give her like some some cool like uh, warrior have some cool warrior redeemed ribbon hair. That'll be cool. I always keep in mind the hairline too. I always kind of put the hairline. I don't know. A lot of these things just come from experimentation. Remember, don't be afraid to mess around with the placement of the eyes, nose, mouth because not everybody has the same facial features. You know, in order to give your characters the proper like treatment and avoid the Barbie doll effect, you want to make sure you uh, you're okay with just making certain you know eyes a little bit higher than usual or you know a little bit lower or the mouth being you know higher or lower so 
Oh yes, okay. Also, remember the nose is here, so the bottom of the nose is the bottom of the ear, right? Because we're pushing it up, the ellipse is going up this way, so that will be the bottom of the ear there. And then the eyebrow comes up like this, that'll be the top of the ear. Notice how all of these shapes and all the placement of these facial features is helping to reinforce the structure that is our downward tilted head. And we like that when there's reinforcements to the structure. That makes it sturdy, that makes it clear, and it communicates your principles properly. So do not forget to do that. And there we go. Oh! <laughs> Oops. Alright, hang on. I'm just going to leave that there for a sec. Let's finish this up. And we will wrap up the the lesson for today. Oops again. Oops. Again. Oh, no. We're not doing that. <laughs> Alright. Alright. So once again, you can see the explosion that is happening in this face. The sadness. The sadness her dog, Lassie, fell into the well and never to return again. That is the look of that girl. And this man is happy. He sees something that he likes. I don't know. What, that's all I got. <laughs> so, now you can see, basically, uh, this is the range of expressions that we will cover for today. Bear in mind, I mean, there's millions of expressions that happen. You know, it's not just mad, happy, and sad. But remember, if there's one thing you can take away from this is that one of the biggest telling signs of what your character is feeling or expressing is going to be told in the eyes. So always keep that in mind, as well as your the lines that are happening in the face. So as long as you take that going forward, you will live long and prosper in the land. So, um, I think we are going to call that good. Episode 36 out the door. So, thank you guys once again for tuning in this week. My name is Keenan Lafferty. Uh, I've said that a little bit early. Let me try this. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. I'm Keenan Lafferty, and I will see you guys next week.